Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we proudly present our spectacular show, a podcast magic and imagination full of Disney wonder, news, and pop culture. It's the Main Street Electrical Podcast with Jim Novotny and David Dollar. Hey, Jen. Hey, Dave. Welcome back. Yay, it's the Mitchell Let's Go Podcast. Oh. And we are back with another episode, and uh, we have got a ton to talk about tonight. Yeah. I mean, we've got to talk about the Boo Bash, which the details yes. came out like three hours ago. It's Husker House, which the details came out like 45 mm. minutes ago. So Literally. Like, uh, Disney has learned. The Bobs have learned now. They're dropping information before we record, which is great. because it's amazing. We, re- we record. We drop the episode on Thursday, and everything comes out. And now they're like giving us stuff on Wednesday morning. I it's mean, like at they, least we yeah. wait till Wednesday to record this. Right? Which is really nice. And it's <laughs> really courteous out. of us. But it's courteous. To the, uh, they probably yeah. called Marcy. And Marcy was like, well, they're not recording till Wednesday. And Bob was like, okay, let's get this information out there Wednesday morning. Yeah, I'm sure that's exactly how it happened. That's exactly what happened. Jen, oh. how did you Disney this week? Oh gosh, how did I Disney? Oh, I just need in a, in a fun way this week. Yes. So my niece and nephews are up in town, which is why mm-hmm. Aunt Jen has been like running like a crazy person and working odd hours this week. Of course. And I was wearing my Minnie Mouse shirt. And of course, my nephew and niece come they're like, oh, we love Minnie Mouse. We want to go to Disney. So then I started showing them all of my Disney photos. <laughs> and so now we have uh, the bug planted for... And my sister's going to kill me because she's just not a theme park person. It has mm-hmm. nothing to do with Disney. She's just not a theme park But Disney's person. not a theme park. It's an experience. It is an experience. Yes. Um. So, and grandma and grandpa are now the, feeling the pressure because the kids are like, we want to go to Disney. So, yes. That's exciting. I did dining this week for several oh. clients. Actually, a couple of times. And I'm really excited because I know it's 60 days out. And this means a couple of things. Number one, usually summer is very slow. Summer is a very slow Typically. time for a lot of travel agents. Uh, this summer is packed out because people are going. They're all going back to the parks and going like crazy. And so I got to do dining, which is 60 days out. So these are dinings happening in July and, and early August. Um, my clients got an upgrade to the Contemporary yesterday or two mm-hmm. days ago, which is amazing. They were like, you know, because they wanted, they have they have nine people. They have two rooms total. Yeah. They're Caribbean Beach. And they wanted to stay at a moderate. And they were offered, they wanted to pull down bed. So they were offered Art of Animation Family Suite. And I'm thinking, she might want to take that. That's a that's a good deal. They've that's stayed there deal. before. They're like, we want to try somewhere else. You know, we wanted to stay here. Okay, that's fine. You know, we'll talk through and whatever. And and so she comes back to me and she says, So they just want to upgrade this to the contemporary. Is is that a good resort? And I'm like, uh, take that deal and run before yes. she realizes she made a mistake. I mean, run with that right now. Like, leave. <laughs> Don't even just leave. And I told Stephanie, my wife, and she was like, OMG, they they go, what? And so of course oh they gosh. they messaged me from the room and this is amazing. It all has pulled in beds and just it's it's really cool watching the clients get stuff. I like I never get up. I love that. They, yeah, never did they get up feedback. Were they excited? Oh about yeah, they loved it. They, they, they okay, absolutely loved it. Loved okay, it. Okay. They they thought it was wonderful. I mean, they they messaged me from it and she's like, This place is amazing. And which uh now she said her husband is kind of angry at me because now he realizes she'll never want to go back down to, to value at all, ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and then of course in parentheses yes. she, well, she texted me and she's like yeah but i think he's really enjoying this too <laughs> so i'm just saying once you go yeah. to lux that's right you always go to lux when you go to lux you realize value sucks or something like that uh, you just become like jen yeah exactly that's the that's the tagline right there it's fine <laughs> so, uh, a little bit of news here uh we're just gonna kind of d- dive in real quick the boobash information came out now we've been wondering about the boobash for mm-hmm. quite a while about what's going to happen with the boobash and and uh, you know how that's all going to how that's all going to come and like with the details and things like that and the prices and the dates and we're all wondering are we going to be able to go to the boobash when we go uh, all of us go down to the to the 50th in October well the yeah. answer to that is no because they don't have any parties oh, that week. it's like this this area of yes. no parties yep. right around the 50th and it's like well crap yep. it's like what you have it's like what people for Christmas have to face of Thanksgiving, like week. Thanksgiving yeah. they get no parties exactly. for Thanksgiving there's week no parties. and so there's no and parties I, it actually and I get it because mm-hmm. the crowds are going to be bigger anyway I get yep. it there's uh there are six dates in August and those yes. dates are going to run you around 129 to 139. Now remember, okay, let me just before we get to the pricing here, let me tell the audience people are going to freak out at these prices. But remember something, this is not a not so scary Halloween party. 
This Traditionally, is it. it starts at seven, goes to 12, priced at $80, $90 per person. This or is considered more. an after hours party. Now, the after hours party already was running anywhere like 125 one, to 140. It, the villains yeah. were like 150, things well, like that. 150, yeah. Something like that. So these are these are specially themed after hours parties. And I know people are like, well, this is the not so scary replacement. I don't think it's, that it is. I don't I think, think it is. is. This is a this is an after hours party. And I've been to an after hours party and it's glorious because they sell so few tickets. It is very limited, unlike it's really limited. Unlike um, the Halloween party. Yeah, Halloween party can be packed out. And I really th- I don't think they're gonna sell many tickets to this. I think they're gonna I limit this either. to an after hours party because i think they know people spend this much money on a party and they have to wait an hour for pirates they're gonna be, That's not gonna be okay no right. not and not at all and so there's six dates in, in august and so it's, it's gonna run from around 129 to 139 depending on the date plus tax tuesdays and fridays and such in september we have one two three four five six seven dates in september which is not a lot because the halloween party was running mm-hmm. two to three dates a week uh right. this is tuesdays and fridays only all the way through, through september and you're looking at about uh, 159 to 169 plus tax for for uh, no 120, 129 to 139 for August. I was gonna say I was like wait yeah. a second. Wait. <laughs> so you're looking at 129 139 for for September as well. Uh, for October, we've got four, three, six. We've got ten dates for October, starting the fifth all the way through the thirty first. Those dates are 159 to 169, except for Halloween, which is 199 plus tax. Now, when I saw it this morning, I thought to myself. Dude, that's that's a lot of money, and it, to me, it really is. Two hundred dollars is a lot of money for a party. Well, and, it's not cheap. And it's thinking really back, I, I don't know that they've ever actually priced out a party, an event like this, a recurring event like this, at two hundred dollars. I know there are tours, and I know there are different mm-hmm. like like one time events. You have dinner in the haunted mansion for three fifty. Oh yeah, that's whatever. That, that's those kind lot. of things. Yeah. Those are special things. I, I don't know that I've seen a ticket like this for two hundred dollars. But they're not going to sell a lot of tickets. You're there on Halloween. The experience of it all is going to be pretty, pretty incredible. Um, the Boobash is going to have your favorite friends, uh, Miss Carlotta will be at the Haunted Mansion. Goofy yeah. and Chip and Dale will be there as well. Yep. Um, you're going to have complimentary snacks like ice cream and popcorn and beverages. And at the after hours, that party, is different. That's huge. That is that is different because typically you have to purchase all your snacks at Not So Scary. So th- yep. that is different. Yep. Well, and again, at the after hours party, you get that for free because right. when I went to the after right. hours party, I probably had like five Mickey bars and like three oh, yeah i kept going back and getting more because i'm like it's free this is like 60 bucks worth of snacks you know the attractions will be open most of them like the river is not going to be open tom Sawyer island won't be open but mine train haunted mansion right. Jungle cruise dumbo things like that the uh, specialty, quote, bigger attractions yes especially fruit foods and drinks like the apple ginger dale frozen drink which is frozen apple cider mixed with ginger ale on top of whipped Ooh. cream it sound? sounds like a foos brew with some cool whip on top is what it sounds like and it uh, sounds delicious but that still sounds amazing it sounds so. great um <laughs> photo pass will be available you can have all kinds of cool shots and everything um magic kingdom you can get in as early as seven now that is mm-hmm. kind of like the party we can get in as early as four get in early as seven yes. although for the after hours again you get I, I remember getting in at seven for my nine o'clock party and yeah, so but that's so you do actually get yeah. two extra hours of part yep, time you do you do uh and it runs about three it runs three hours like nine to midnight or whatever three hours you know yeah. to that after park closing you know if we could, I would go. I'm not going to be around that time. I mean, the last yeah. party is the 24th of September, and then picks up again on the 5th of October, and so I won't be there at all. Uh, I just unfortunately, if I, if I end up down there over one of the dates, I'll definitely buy tickets. Yeah, I just absolutely. I don't know if if I end up getting another trip in between. We'll see. Yeah, I can't swing stretching it out till like the Wednesday morning uh, of the trip after. I mean, oh yeah, because you know, no. we're we're talking about it ourselves. Like yeah, my my wife and I are we're, we're kind of pushing back and forth on you know, whether I come home Sunday or Monday and I want to come home Monday and she's like, you need to come home Sunday. So we're kind of going back and forth on that. There's no way. I, hey, can I stay till Wednesday for a party? I'm going to spend a lot more money on. Mm. No. <laughs> so yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, so the boo bash, I'm excited. I think it's gonna be cool. Yeah, I definitely think so too. Uh, Q markers are being removed all over the place. Now Universal oh, is doing this already and they're actually loading up everything. Doing, yeah. Their shows are being uh, fitted up. You know, all the people are going in the shows and stuff. Disney's starting to do this a lot now. I think yeah. Carousel of Progress, they're filling up all the rows. Well, yep. filling up. They, they they're got, loading, they got, they're yeah, loading, they're loading all, all the rows. rows. Yeah. They're not doing that like, okay, skip this row, skip this right. row. Right, right, right. Which is good because sometimes the best rows you want are the ones that are blocked off. And, oh my gosh, and, that literally happened. I was like, no, but that's the one I always said. <laughs> That's my oh, it's That's so great! You room. you blocked it off for me. Th- what do you mean I can't sit there? What? What? <laughs> do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? I'm Jen. I'm the Jen, and so so that's that's happening, which is really exciting. It's another step. It's another step that we're taking. 
no word on the mask mandates, no word on the, the mask restrictions. I know Universal lifted them last week, and now you can you can basically take your mask off. I, yeah, vaccinated, unvaccinated, like, people are gonna take their mask off. Very I few mean, people are gonna wear it. The rule just, is yeah, the, rule, the rule is indoors, mm-hmm. unvaccinated wears the mask. Yep, vaccinated does not. Right. Um, it's an so honor system. Said, it's and I, I think everybody on all sides of the aisle agree that the honor system is not going to work. It's just. It's, and it's, we are not condoning no. one way or another. No, we're not. I'm not telling you to wear Fading. it. I'm telling you not to wear it. You make your own decision. That's, you that's have to make you. your decision. Um, and then Disney right now, though, still outdoor common areas. Mm-hmm. You're good. No yep. masks required. Which, thank yep. God. It is hot. Yeah. <laughs> it is and it makes the difference in a vacation because again going back to my contemporary family they were telling me too about the masks and they were just saying that how they couldn't imagine wearing masks right now because it's hot it's really it's, hot it's like and, it's humid it's and with the outdoor cues you're not having to put the mask on until you walk into the actual like oh is actual, that is that the happening? Okay. Of the ride itself. like okay good. um like if you walk into let's say haunted mansion and you know how sometimes that line runs way oh, past yeah. the riverboat way you don't have to take your mask off until you walk under the arches that says haunted mansion so okay. the official, actual the designated official start queue. of the queue. Okay. Exactly. Big Thunder okay. the same way. You know Piss what? Crack, things like kind that. Kind of like the food and drink thing. Mm-hmm. Is it like that? Because you know before, like you're not allowed to yes. have food and the drinks yep. past a certain point in the queue, yes. which is usually yeah. the official yeah. queue start. Yeah. And I was listening to Imagineers yesterday. And they were talking about it. And, that, and Matt, one of, the, one of the hosts, they had experienced this because he was down there recently. Oh, and, yeah, because um, they're so close. And so, yeah, he's right there. They're in Jacksonville. He's right there. And he was saying that, you know, he was expecting somebody to be dead at the end of the line. You know, the one that says the line starts here. And as you get into that line, and then say, hey, put your mask on. But that's not the case. He said, you know, they went to mine train, seven doors mine train. And as soon as they walked in to the to where the where the arches were says fast pass and right. mine train, wait yeah. time, they had to put the masks on then. But up until that point at the outdoor line, he said the line actually was stretching around to Mermaid. It was that far. Oh, that's normal. But that's they didn't I... have to put it because the lines are still being distanced somewhere. Because they're still distanced. Yeah. And and Some honestly, of the lines. like so so here's my thing. This is this is Jen's opinion here. Yes. Do we need to play music enjoy- to cover up your rant? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> no, it's not a rant. Jen enjoyed personal space. Jen has mm. always enjoyed a little personal space. Mm-hmm. I'm not like, like, I don't need to do this whole social distancing, six feet net, but give me some elbow room. Like, I don't need you right up, like standing on my flip-flop in the back because like some people do that. And I'm like, dude, you need to back off. It's hot. <laughs> I need a little personal space. So like I was kind of down <laughs> with a little bit of distancing, but that's just selfish because I don't want people. Okay, hold on. What wait, what is this personal space thing you talk about? I don't know the concept of personal space. Like I've always know. enjoyed personal Whatever. space. So like I like always in lines though, I hate when people are like shoving. So mm-hmm. that part of COVID, I was like, yeah, we could keep some level of this would be kind of nice. Because <laughs> Well, I think I kind of feel like three feet is about average. It's kind of the social norm. And when you're in line, you're not fine right with that. people. Uh, and most fine. people are not, not going to be right up on your flip flop. Um, uh, well, uh, believe me. I've had I'm sure they happen. will. I said most people. I'm sure some people <laughs> will. But uh, you know, I feel like three feet is kind of the social norm there. If you're in line, you know, that the people ahead of you, give you give that space. person a, a chance to move first. And then you move like a second later. You don't just start moving when they move. It's, there's like a little. I wish. Because you want, you know, you want some space there or whatever. And and so, yeah. <laughs> like, I think like in America, we can keep that like, okay, let's have a little elbow room. Like, okay, here's my party. Here's my friends. And I need you just like a little bit that way so that you're not. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So the Tusker House is reopening on June the 20th. This was just released this morning, and I verified it on three or four different spots, uh, three mm-hmm. or four different places online. Uh, Disney has not said anything officially yet, I don't think, but I, I, I trust this information where I'm finding it, all the places I'm finding it. Uh, June 20th is when it's reopening. June 4th is when they're accepting reservations. Now, the characters will be back for lunch and dinner. I cannot find whether it's going to be a breakfast or not, and I don't know that they've released that. I haven't seen yet. Uh, about and Maybe they have. I'm just not finding it, but I can't find whether it's going to be breakfast, lunch, and dinner or just lunch and dinner because they haven't done a lot of breakfast at all. Garden Grill is not for breakfast. Chef Mickey's no Chef Mickey just re- just opened for breakfast, I believe. Um, but Cinderella's Castle is not for breakfast, and so I, right. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I'm not know. sure. They've sort of been doing limited breakfasts, although bringing it back would make sense to me. Um, who knows though? And we do know Disney has officially announced that Tusker's reopening this summer, so that yep. date yeah we makes didn't know sense when. to me. Oh, we just no. didn't have an official date, so I. I, I would buy that. I would buy this date. I don't know that it's official. I'm guessing we probably will hear something official later right. today or tomorrow. But yeah, probably. probably. Probably from Disney. And mm-hmm. uh, so, I, I don't know. And actually, tickets to the Tusker House will be $200 on Halloween. And um, otherwise, it'll be $159 other, you know, uh, for August and September. 
Mm. Jen's typing, so she didn't hear anything I just Sorry. said. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, August and September. <laughs> Sorry. I, I said tickets for the Tusker House will be two hundred dollars on Halloween. And oh, really? One fifty-nine in August and September. So yeah, yeah. probably. And Jen went. Mm. <laughs> It's like I'm talking to my wife. It really, it really is. <laughs> I'm giving her valid information. See, now uh-huh. and here, mm-hmm. yeah. and here, I'm like sitting here going like, well, of course, David's giving the proper information. <laughs> I can answer this text message real quick. All right. So that's really kind of all the news we have. Let's talk a little bit about the movies. Now, Ooh. in a couple of weeks, we're going to do another another episode where we do kind of a movie review show where we kind of take on three or four movies each and talk yes. about them. I just saw Dinosaur for the first time. Uh, you, you know, were messaging me during yeah, I did. <laughs> and by the way, I, and I'll get to the review later in a couple of weeks when we do that episode, but that movie's a violent, that movie okay. is violent. And I was like, all like, well, maybe I should watch that one for this next one. And now I'm like, Oh, maybe. you should. But I was really? like, I was like, there's a lot of death. Do in I have to? <laughs> Disney's animated features, like the 35th, the 32nd animated feature from 2000. Um, it's, and we'll get to that later on, but I watched that. I watched babes in Toyland from 1961. Ah, uh, yeah, it's, it's a slog. It is a slog. It uh, really is, and we'll we'll talk about that too. But the one I do want to talk about is Cruella, coming yes. out yesterday, coming out last year, last weekend. I watched last it yesterday. Weekend. You watched it this past weekend, of course. Mm-hmm. Emma Stone Sunday. in the title role of Cruella, Joel Fry and Paul Hauser, I think his name is. Uh, I think um, as as uh, Jasper and uh, Horace. Horace. By the way, uh, Paul Hauser is fantastic in i Tonya. if you've ever seen the movie i Tonya, which i've not is, seen that one. Oh, you would love I would Tanya. i you really would it is okay. fantastic it's it's um it's basically tanya harding and nancy kerrigan it's that story oh i would love that because and i followed that whole thing like it, I was it, super it, a whole lot to that story that i don't think i even knew but paul walter hauser plays plays horace in this movie and he's in i Tonya, and he nearly steals the show from tanya harding or from uh from margot robbie and sebastian stan he oh, is really? so okay good and so funny He's good in this one too. He oh, he's really good in this guy. one. Yeah. So the it. story of, of Cruella essentially is, and I'm not going to give too many spoilers at all, but uh, you know, it starts out when she's a little girl, it kind of, she yes. has the hair with the black and the white hair and you know, her mom's trying to, trying to help her out, trying to help her fit in. And some things happen. They end up at the Hellman house owned by the Baroness, who is this fashion diva. Yes. And uh, some crazy things happen and Cruella ends up on her own, but she's not Cruella at this time. She's Estella. She becomes yes. Cruella later. And uh, the movie kind of, she meets Jasper and Horace, which of course we know from the cartoon itself. Oh yeah. Dalmatians cartoon. And so I was kind of pleasantly surprised to see them as main characters in this. Where I was the, too. I had no they idea. They were kind of the, they're kind of the plucky sidekicks, the comic relief in the cartoon mm-hmm. where here, they actually have more, a much more in-depth serious they have, they have a pretty like meaty role. In you know, them. and so, which is really, which is really kind of fun. And uh, so with the Baroness, she, she has this, they have this run in and everything and she meets the Baroness. She ends up getting a job there. And, the first part of the movie is is Estella slash Cruella mm. getting those goals. She's going after her goals, going after her life mm. career. The second part of the movie, those goals change into something a little different. Once she finds some things out, she discovers some truths that maybe she didn't know. And uh, is that kind of a fair assessment of the movie, you think? Yeah, I think. And, and it really, I loved how it took you through. Because, you know, in your head, if you look at a villain like Cruella, you're like, okay, well, how would you end up like this? I'm winning a coat made of puppies and you know all this crazy right. stuff like who gets there and then like as you as her story unfolds you start going ah oh. i mean grit now meanwhile brady looks at me he's like so is that the real story or is i'm like well in the there's really no nobody knows the backstory <laughs> because like right. Corella, this is this is storytelling like this is just something that could have happened but I don't know. I loved the backstory. Now, have I you loved it. have you read any of the books, the the villain books that have come out? Um, oh, you these, mean like the newer ones? Yeah, um, they have this. They have the series of books out. And yes, the now, I have. Like, that basically it's like Gaston and Maleficent and the Queen of I've Hearts read, and whatever. And it's kind of their backstory. I've read the kind. Evil Queen's backstory. Okay. I've read um, not Maleficent's uh, Ursula's backstory. I mm. haven't read all of them. But yes, I've read I've read some of them, and I've not read Cruella's. Are they are they any good? Did you like I, them? So I it depends. So it's young adult fiction. It's young correct? adult yeah, fiction. Okay. I did enjoy it. I, yeah. I really did. Um, I don't know that everybody would enjoy it. Oh, I read. Um, oh, there was another one. I know I did read Gaston's backstory. Yeah, not everybody. That wouldn't be everybody's cup of tea. But I did enjoy it. It's kind of like the twisted fairy tale kind of idea. It's from the other person's point of view. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Twisted fairy tales. I think is what the, I don't. That's know what, what it's called. called. They're on Audible, and I thought about picking one of them up and just to kind of listen through because they're not. Yeah, I, I mean, they're anywhere from six it. to eight hours long. I thought on Audible. Um, 
but uh, not the way you listen. <laughs> that's true. I listen 1.5 speed, so I'll knock them out in a few hours. And uh, well, it's I got stuff to do. I got to make money for this agency. I, it's, it's hard carrying the agency on my back. Oh, that's all I can you say. know what? We just you appreciate know? all of your efforts. You're welcome. It's my second. <laughs> so Cruella, uh, Emma, first of all, I love Emma Stone. I oh, adore Emma Stone. She is Same. firmly planted. I, and of course, you know that I rank everything. Yes, and you do. so I have lists for everything, and she's yes, one of my top do. ten favorite actresses right now. That's she's fair. probably seven or eight. I love Emma Stone. I love mm-hmm. everything she's in. Loved her La La Land. She was great in the favorite. Um, she's done a lot of really, really fun stuff. And I like her because she's done some really quirky, uh, some more serious stuff, but she's also done just some funny comedic, like I'm not in this for the awards, I'm in this to have a good time kind of stuff. I like that. And like her in Super Bad was great. She was oh, I didn't see really that. funny in Super Bad. Uh, I don't know if you like super, well, you may like super bad. I don't know. It's it's um <laughs> uh it's where the, the McLovin phrase comes from. And I'm sure you've heard oh, of okay, yeah. Okay. Christopher okay. Plas plays the character of McLovin, yeah. Seth Rogen's mm-hmm. in it, and Jonah Hill and blah blah I blah. Like I it. don't recommend this to the audience because it is definitely not for kids, so don't go watching that. Be Do not watch like, that. Hey, don't tell me to watch that. <laughs> anyway, she's great in that. Um Emma Thompson, of course, is the Baroness, and she is just she's elegant. I love oh, Emma yeah. and everything I love Emma in. Thompson. She's just so I love her. She reminded me of a British uh, Miranda Priestly, um, yes. Meryl Streep. I could have yes. seen Meryl Streep play this role. I'll be honest. I with was you, a little. But... I I think I think this was the right call though. Yes, because I think had she played this, people would have been people would have compared her to Miranda Priestly and be like, oh, that's just her character from yeah you know, a British version of of, of Devil Wears Prada. Well, I was, and that that's a, yeah. literally what I was going to say is there were shades of, and I love Devil Wears Prada, mm-hmm. but yep. I, I love that. I mean, there was a whole fashion connection, and I yep. feel. Meryl would have really solidified that. Yeah. Well, and the, the whole movie, the plot itself, I know we've kind of danced around it talking about random things here, but the whole plot of the movie is her Corella story, kind of how mm-hmm. she got to where she got, as you will pick up from 101 Dalmatians. Now, I don't know yeah. how much time goes from, uh, well, enough time for puppies enough to, time to, for... to Dalmatians, I guess. So you've got, you know, a couple I of mean, years there. Probably. Um, there is a mid credit scene. I there think is. I was the only one in our theater that knew that. Oh, we stayed. Our whole the theater. theater stayed. Yeah. Uh, no, nobody in our theater stayed. There was a couple next to me, and I thought they were going to stay. They were sitting there, and we were all watching, and everybody else was getting up. And I'm I, sometimes the lights come on a little bit, and I think I would have said something if the lights were on, but otherwise I just didn't say anything. And then the couple next to me started to get up, and I just kind of leaned over and I said, "There's a mid credit scene." Really? There is a mid credit scene. So they sat down again, and we saw the mid credit scene, and they were like. Thanks, man. <laughs> Nobody else in this, everybody else was already gone. Everybody it's was gone. So good. It, I, so I love that. It's, it's a fun little fun little ending to the story itself. Uh, I liked the movie quite a bit. I know I, I was thinking about you because you're somewhat of a fashionista as well. You really are a fashion. You're a fashion girl. You you know your fashion. You know what looks good. You know you don't. Um, you know if I wear socks and sandals, you're gonna tell me flat out. You know you're my friend. I love you. Don't ever do that again. Yes. And so, <laughs> I mean, it really would be like. <laughs> Where I, where she, if she discovered I was on meth, I think she would have had more sympathy for me being on meth, on, on, on drugs than wearing socks and sandals. Yes. Because socks and I, sandals I are a choice. Meth is something I just spiraled into out of a life out of control. Socks and sandals, that's a choice. Yeah, and, that, uh, that, that, then that's an unfortunate choice. If you wear socks and sandals, yeah. Yeah. So I'm not anyway, judging you, but I'm judging you. No, the soundtrack is also pretty amazing. Uh, it's, they, they, the whole movie takes place in the 70s. So they had a lot of 70s music going on there. And I love the soundtrack. There's actually I some 80s love. stuff in there that was thrown in there. But toward the end. Um, you got uh, the Ohio, Ohio Players, Nina Simone, uh, the Bee Gees, the Clash. Um, oh, yeah. You know, Ike and Tina Turner have two songs on the soundtrack itself. And I'm thinking about purchasing the soundtrack. And on Amazon, I'm would. only seeing the streaming of the MP3. I'm not even seeing a CD. You can't, pr- really? Yeah, I don't know. Is it? Let me let me just click on this here. Because no, I that was the one thing, like the whole way through the music was just spot on. I love the whole soundtrack. Yeah, audio CD. Okay, it comes out June 18th, 2020. Oh, okay. That's right. why. So you okay. can stream it now. You All just right. can't get the CD until 2021. So so yeah, that's, uh, uh, that's a pretty big deal. So you know what? Contest. Contest right here. Okay. So we're looking for... We're looking for uh, we're looking for reviews online. We on iTunes, mm-hmm. Apple Podcasts, things like that. We that, and I always look at Apple Podcasts. We want some reviews. We love five star reviews. Starting today, June second, when we're recording this, if you go online, if you leave a review for us, five stars, we're gonna ask for, we're gonna we're buying your vote basically. Um, leave us a review. If we can get at least five reviews, and I'm gonna say five because if one person does it, eh, I, that's no fun. Five people, we will do a drawing and we will send you a copy 
of the either the streaming, the MP3 or whatever of the Corella soundtrack, mm-hmm. or we will send you a copy of the CD itself. Yes. The Corella soundtrack. So that's our contest. We'll let it go to the, maybe maybe let's say the next three episodes. Yeah. And uh, if we can get some reviews online, that's what we're looking for. We'd it's a fabulous soundtrack. It, so, yep. So any um any other thoughts on Corella? I know you loved it. I liked. I, I like you liked it more than I did, but I did like it quite a bit. So yeah, I um of course. David judges movies in a different way than I do. I, do. I judge I really it based do. on how entertained I am the entire mm-hmm. time and how good the storytelling is. And I thought the storytelling was spot on. I loved all of the imagery. I'll just leave it there. And I did love the fashion mm-hmm. and I laughed and I was like, oh my gosh. And I loved Emma Stone and all of the characters. So um, yeah, it was, it, long. It, it was a longer Two movie. This is not, minutes long. it is not for, I would say not for the younger kids. No, I it's don't not. think, it's I not. mean, it's PG 13. So definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is some violence in here. It's not 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 gratuitous. It's not, not gratuitous. Nobody gets their arm sh- cut off. Nobody gets shot in the head or anything. But there's there no blood. Some, there is really really no blood, but there is some some scenes of of violence yeah, of death. There's some of, violence, you know, um, things like that. People falling off things. And, and then I don't remember a ton of language. There there was no, probably I don't some. Remember, I don't remember any. Language. Okay, so I know let's just some, say but I don't there, remember any language. I don't remember anything specific. If so, it was we'll call it very mild. Yes, uh, yeah. but. I mean, it probably existed, but mm-hmm. nothing like I didn't hear any like f bombs or right. like anything right. like that. Right. <laughs> no, nothing. I didn't even hear a b word, and I really I didn't there was either. One time, there was one scene I was watching, and I thought the Baroness was, was about to say it. She, She's such, a, and it cut away. Yes. And so it did, yeah, mm-hmm. and so there's there's that. Yeah. And Emma Stone is. You, she's having so much fun in this role and you i can love how she's having you fun. can tell when i watch when i watch a movie i can tell a lot of times when actors are just you can just tell they're having so much fun playing the character and how could you not and i feel like she's just having so much fun eating this role up just really oh, yeah. just having a good time with this and just doing the scenes and everything and so i i, I really really like this now yeah. quick question off the cuff um what other villains do you want to see a backstory for do you want to see any more backstories Ooh. I know we've seen Maleficent, which, by the way, one of the few times I liked Angelina Jolie. I um, love, I've loved Maleficent. I thought that was. I did. I thought she was wonderful mm-hmm. in Maleficent. Oh, she was fantastic. I mean, I probably randomly, I would love a backstory on the Evil Queen. Okay. Like I know that just, and I don't know why. I know we've had some different. Oh, have we really had a lot yeah. of Snow White backstories? I don't think we've had. Is anything Jennifer official Goodwin too old now to play Snow White? Because I want her. I see oh, her. Oh, but Snow I White. love her. She's in her forties now, and I kind of well, feel like you have to have a twenty-three-year-old or something to play Snow maybe. White to really make it effective. But I mean, because like I loved Regina in Once Upon a Time. Yeah. Like I loved that whole story with Regina, and so I think that because I think the Evil Queen is such a great villain, I mm-hmm. feel like that would be a fun one to see um, in the background. Aside from that, I don't. I mean, Gaston would be fine, but that's not yeah. necessarily one that I'm like would be running to the theaters to go see. Even though I love Beauty and the Beast, I just right. feel like he's just a self obsessed na- narcissist. So, right. so we don't want to see the Demon King from Black Cauldron, kind of their backstory. And... Yeah, maybe not. Maybe like, not? let's no. hmm. like I pulled up Disney Plus for my niece and nephews, and like the Black Cauldron was still showing in like my you know like hmm. recently viewed. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah. Don't Reminder, watch. Disney Plus like, you watch this. Ha ha. I know. No. <laughs> like, because you watch Black Cauldron and it's like showing other animated classics, I'm like, that. Those no, I don't are... want to take any of the suggestions. Like, no. Yeah. No, no we're, we're good. Like, because I watch Black <laughs> Cauldron, I don't want to watch Hellraiser. I don't know why you're suggesting that to me. Well, I don't, I don't think, this, I don't think Hellraiser's on Disney Plus. <laughs> I don't want to watch, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street Part Four. What the heck? It's just. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about Sedona. You went oh. to Sedona for your 40th birthday trip. And I want to kind of let you just kind of spill a little bit about the trip itself. And, you know, I, I want to hear all about it. And, you know, I know that you guys flew out there to Arizona and did a whole bunch of look, looked at the big hole in the ground, which was great. And I mean, <laughs> so talk a little bit about Sedona. What'd you guys do? Wow. We did a lot in Sedona. I will tell you that much. Um, we, well, we started off, first of all, we have wanted to see the Red Rocks, especially Brady. He has like really been into the Red Rocks and wanting to see it. And a lot of that is, you know, with Soren, you could, you go past Red Rocks. Now it's not Sedona, but it's the same idea. I only know Red Rocks because John Tesh performed there on a, a very big album. Like, well, isn't that, do you mean the Red Rocks Amphitheater in Colorado? Because yes. that's different Maybe. than the Sedona Red Rocks. It's different know. than the Sedona but, but, Red Rocks. You know what? There are rocks and there are red and color. And they're red. So and uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, we started by flying into Phoenix. Because um, from Pittsburgh, we can get a direct flight there. And also, it's a really cool drive, especially if you're an East Coaster and you're used to deciduous trees, pine trees, you know, the whole East Coast vibe, Four Seasons, you know, fly out there and you're in the desert. And the elevation in Arizona is crazy. And they actually have all sorts of different climates. 
So you find yeah. Phoenix stinking hot, number one, but that's fine. We stayed at this great little hotel. Um, it's in Tempe. It's about three hours from the airport or three hours, three, three miles from the airport. <laughs> Not far at all. Has a great restaurant, beautiful view um, of the city, different things. So we just stayed there overnight so we could kind of adjust to the time change. Arizona's general mountain time, which currently is like Pacific time because mountain time doesn't okay. switch. I don't understand all that, whatever. In any case, the next day we rented our Jeep and we did rent a Jeep because we were going to different trailheads um, in Sedona, drove the two hours to Sedona. And um, because I'm bougie and because I, <laughs> it was my 40th birthday, yep. I splurged on the resort and yep. <laughs> I stayed at Lauberge, which is one of, in my opinion, one of the nicest resorts in Sedona. Um, well, the other one that's- whether you're bougie or not, it is your 40th birthday. That's a big I mean, deal. Uh, that's a, I mean, you deserve that. You really, Thank really you. do deserve to stay Thank with you. that. I mean, that's not 40, like 27th birthday. Eh, maybe that's a Hampton Inn kind of thing. 20, <laughs> 20, you know, 17th birthday with a bunch of friends. That's a La Quinta kind of trip. No. This is your 40th. Come on. Right. Well, right. And this like had um, the, the kind of room we purchased is uh, almost a standalone cabin up on stilts with our view of the Red Rocks. And we could see Snoopy Rock. Nice. called Snoopy Rock because it looks like Snoopy laying on his back, you mm -hmm. know, on top of his little dog house, nice. it's complete with the nose. It's freaky. If I show you <laughs> I, and on my story, well, there's you, a picture, which you have to like expand it to see it. The one, but, you, one you posted. Yeah. The one I posted on my story. So mm -hmm. in, I saved my Sedona story. So if you want to go to my Jen underscore Novotny Instagram mm -hmm. and you can click on Sedona birthday and you can see a lot of the images that I posted. Um, so that was super cool. That was a very lovely hotel. We had a lot of space to kind of stargaze and look at all sorts of stuff. But then a lot of what we did is, um, you know, hiking is big. Now, I am not necessarily the most outdoorsy person. I will be the first one to say that. But mm -hmm. you're in Sedona. What are you going to do? So I, I brought hiking shoes. And we love, I do love beautiful scenery. And I do enjoy walks. I enjoy being active. So we went the first time and we did Devil's Bridge, which Instagrammers have made famous. So we're like, well, of course, we're going to go see Devil's Bridge. It's a moderate hike, about two and a half miles out, two and a half miles back. But the image is amazing because there's this like cleft of rock that goes up. It looks like a bridge. And from the first vantage point, it looks like there is zero space. Now it's way wider when you get out there. Right. right. It still looks super impressive. So you got to go get the photo. Um, then we spent some time going to, there's a little village um, shopping center, uh, Tlacopaki, which they have a lot of different Native American shops, like in terms of like jewelry, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of real turquoise out in Arizona some great restaurants, some great eateries, some coffee shops, all of that shopping, which I like. So we did that one day and then we hiked Cathedral Rock on our very last day. That was a hard hike. I mean, oh my goodness. I can't really believe I did some of that, but I did successfully make it all the way to the top of Cathedral Rock, got some phenomenal photos as a result. And then, as you said, um, it's only about two hours from the Grand Canyon. So in the middle of the trip, we did, a, we did a tour. So pink Jeep tours is a really popular tour operator out there. Okay. And they, I mean, of course all their vehicles are pink, but they do a great job. And so we got like kind of a narrated guided tour all the way up the Red Rock scenic highway. They took us to this beautiful overlook for the Grand Canyon. So it was a fabulous first experience of me seeing the Grand Canyon. Told right. us all about the it. Big hole in the ground. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but really, at some point in your life, everybody should see it. Yeah, I've, I've is, heard that pictures don't do it justice, just how majestic and not how amazing it is. Like, just, just the visual of, yeah, holy crap, this is huge. I mean, it, just <clears throat> big deal. It does not even begin, even the pictures of Sedona does not even begin to actually show how amazing it was. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's crazy because I take my picture, I'm like, no, but what my eyes are seeing is different than what this photo is. It's like, you just right. don't get the depth unless the light is exactly perfect. Um, so definitely worth seeing. And then we did a hot air balloon also in Sedona. I forgot to mention that one. I saw that. So yep. <laughs> that mm -hmm. was so cool because like you're driving and you're at this like open thing and you just see them pull out this basket and then you're watching the whole balloon inflate. It's not like you get there and the balloon's already right. inflated. You sit there and you're watching like, well, okay. <laughs> Was and it they just skim the rocks with it? Was it nerve wracking being in a basket that, that, that high in the air? Um, 
if you thought about it too much. And does now, it I'm, wobble much, or does it? It like, does not. Okay, no, it does good. Not that wobble. would that would freak me out if I walk from one side of the basket to the other. Which I know the basket's not big, but if I step from big. one to the other and the basket kind of shifted, I'd be like, ah. So no, that would, no, that would no, get no. Me. And they have like a little rope to hold on to, which Brady, mm-hmm. as long as he has something to hold on to, he's okay. Well, I'm like that. Like that rope's gonna help if the <laughs> basket drops off of the balloon. Right. It's not, but okay. <laughs> um, but that was just a really, really neat experience. Um, so definitely something that I think a lot of people would enjoy, whether you don't have to be super outdoorsy. There's just a lot of great food. There's a lot of great shopping. And, you know, even in that entire surrounding area, we just, we had a really fantastic time. Um, so. I love that. That is, that is really cool. That's something that I, I, I wanted to see out West. Um, Stephanie has been a couple of times with her family mm-hmm. over the work. Um, she went on a girl's trip uh, with her, her mom or her sister and, and whatever, a couple of years ago. And they went out to like spent 10 days in Utah and, and whatever. And I think they're going again this summer, her mom and sister and her dad are going to go out there. And she's actually planning the trip because mm-hmm. she works with me as a travel agent. I was like, you need to get a travel agent. She's like, I know. And so she's <laughs> putting it together by going out there to the West. And, um, and so, I mean, it looks, it looks really cool just to be yeah. able to see the wonder of all of that because it's really God's is. creation. I mean, you know, and you don't get that in Amish country. Mm-hmm. You see Amish people, you don't get to see the Grand Canyon. Uh, right. Obviously. I mean, all we're seeing is livestock and- yeah exactly and so you know people in phoenix are coming to pittsburgh coming to where you are and they're like we were hanging out with jen and all she did was churn butter and raise barns and <laughs> i mean it's not it's not a hole in the ground but it's still pretty impressive because those barn raisings i've seen seven brides with seven, seven brothers those barn raisings and the dancing look really hard it looks exhausting <laughs> i'm yeah i mean that's that's what i do every weekend obviously yeah. so well that's how you learn how to sing and dance is doing barn raising while dancing oh yeah which by the way for the audience if you've ever seen seven brides with seven brothers it's not a great movie no but that opening sequence of the barn raising is insane agreed that's it a is good one. just so so good uh okay so real quick shout out to we went shopping uh my wife and i we went shopping last week and we had a respite at church where they kept campbell and some other kids for a couple of hours so we got to go do a little shopping which was nice and we met a couple actually stephanie has got the the skyliner uh Dooney and Burke back, the big one. Mm-hmm. So she's walking around with it, and we're kind of waiting for the stores to open because we get there ten minutes early. And and one of the couple, there's a couple out there with little with a little kid running around, and she's like, "I like your bag." And of course, that sparks up a conversation. Of you course. women, I like your bag. Oh, well, here's where I got it. Conversation ensues. Absolutely. And uh, we, we got we're all talking about Disney and reopening and things like that. And they mentioned listening to to YouTube and and listening to podcasts. It was, they they love to be our guest podcast and. And, um, and my wife was like, well, you know, he has the Disney podcast too and blah, blah, blah. And, and what's your podcast? And I was like, Main Street Electrical Podcast. Oh, I've heard you guys. What? Exactly. <laughs> First time meeting. And I don't, know, cool. I don't even think we got their names. I was like, well, thank you. That's really, really awesome. She's like, yeah, I love your show. I listen to you guys. Well, and so shout out. shout out to the couple that message uh, us so we that, know who that, you are, <laughs> that we met, that we met going into Carter's and Oshkosh Bagosh. Uh, out the outlet store, <laughs> and so as we were getting our kids in pajamas, and so very cool. That is our show, folks. Um, don't forget to find us online at the MSE Podcast. That is the phrase that pays in magic and spirit and love and fun. Find us online at the MSE Podcast uh, at gmail.com. That is our email address. You can email us all the fun stuff you want to talk to us about. You can find us online at uh, dot com. And that's our website. You see all the show notes, see all the people who've been on our show. We've had a lot of people on our show. Yes, uh, shout have. out to Rob Lott, who's now been doing not, not going to be doing Dapper Dan stuff very soon. Yay! Got called back. They're going to be performing. Uh, crossing our fingers for hoop. We're hearing it's coming back. We don't know when. Apparently, the cast members are reportedly are being called back. We're hoping soon. We want Rob to get back on there. Of course, patch and past and future guest Rob Lott, who was just fabulous on our show at episode 36, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I looked it up yesterday. Uh, so find all that stuff and all that information there. Find our contact information there as well but jen where can we find you online well you can find me at upon a star jen and then at jen underscore novotny on instagram and i that's a public profile as well so you Mm -hmm. can check out my most recent trips and you know watch me churn butter i guess yeah that'd be fun (laughs) (laughs) i I mean i say churn butter and raise barns that's all i know that amish do i'm sure they do a lot more than that i'm sure there are more things like making leather sandals and buckles and stuff by the way our amish listeners probably are so offended every time you talk about the amish it's ridiculous but so i want to apologize on behalf of jen let me just say that uh find me online at the um magic on a dollar on instagram the magic on a dollar instagram find me magic on a dollar and disney on a dollar on facebook both pages go like both pages because 
can't get enough of being Disney. It's all, all Disney stuff, <laughs> universal travel, all kinds of fun stuff there. Of course, I just do. Uh, I have another podcast called My Kids Got the Autism. Just started releasing new episodes. It's all about me and my autistic kid and the fact that I have no idea what I'm doing. And you can find those on Monday. It's My Kids Got the Autism. And Jen, you have another podcast called Divas Dish. Divas Diz, Dish the original, original Diz Dishers. That is right. And we do have a new episode out as of the week before my trip. And right. we, because we didn't get to record. Of course. An episode in between there. And we are recording again tomorrow. So we should have some new content up. We're sort of a little sporadic every couple of weeks. Just kind of depends. We've got busy ladies. So we connect yep. when we can and put it out. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's a fun show. It really is just you're listening in on a couple of girls talk about Disney sometimes and makeup sometimes and laughing and random stories it's 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 a pretty true it's a trip it's it really is fun <laughs> I, I enjoy the show I, I get a kick out of it just because you i feel like i'm in your world for like you know 45 minutes where you all just going back and forth and whatever and sometimes i feel like you don't even remember the microphone's on because you're just I mean, talking on it and honestly that is what it's like sometimes we we've, mm-hmm. we've gotten to the point now we're so comfortable with each other yep. <laughs> we just kind of start recording and we sort of have a loose script more than the- once have you heard the phrase what were we talking about again? Yes. Oh, that's right. Easily. Like Disney. Yeah. And so, yeah. And, well, we know, but we're like seven degrees to Disney. We can bring anything back. And we yeah. always do eventually. It's a talent. It really is. It really is a talent. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're, 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 we're a little crazy. That's and of course, find us on socials at the MSC Podcast on Instagram and on Facebook and on Twitter as well. Uh, Jen, so good to see you again. I'm glad you're back. I need I needed you back here so I could talk to you more frequently because I was like, why is Jen not answering my messages? I've messaged her like four Answer, times in the last hour. I single message. And I'm like, she's leaving in a hole. Of, she's well, look, get a hole of the ground. That's all she's doing. Come on, answer my questions. <laughs> I answered every single question. <laughs> you did. You did. I good was on a three back. hour time difference though. So <laughs> that was. That That's was very true. I messaged you like five, seven in the morning and it's like, you know, 4 a.m. So there. I didn't get to it for a few hours. <laughs> like, I, I have a question about something that can wait till tomorrow. <laughs> As always. Jen, you have a good week. Thank you so much for listening, guys. And hey, don't forget to thank your Phoenicians. Thank you for listening to the Main Street Electrical Podcast. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at The MSE Podcast. Or visit our website at themsepodcast.com. Be sure to subscribe and may all your wishes come true.